on St. Valentine's Day, 1981, one of the worst disasters in the history of the Irish state took place when a nightclub caught fire in Artane on Dublin's north side. 48 people died in the blaze. Half of them were teenagers. Four were only 16. Eight were 17. And all of the 48 victims were no older than 26 years of age. Sunday, February the 14th, 2021, is the 40th anniversary of the Stardust tragedy. These images capture the panic, confusion and horror of the disaster. An ordinary night out at a local disco had become an inferno. The entire nightclub was engulfed in flames, while survivors and rescuers could actually see and hear people screaming for help inside, pressed against the doors and windows. A local priest who rushed to the scene said afterwards that they seemed like mannequins propped up in a shop window. Four men found bodies stacked on top of each other inside the doors, literally only inches from safety. Those who escaped endured massive psychological trauma, and for the victims' families, the Stardust Fire is a nightmare that even after 40 years, they can never wake up from. Hi everyone, so this is another little video uh, about Dublin's history that I'd like you to watch. This very ordinary looking building that I'm standing outside is the site of one of the worst tragedies to ever happen in this country. 40 years ago this building was a nightclub called the Stardust and on this day, St. Valentine's Day, 40 years ago it was packed with over 800 people inside for uh, a St. Valentine's Day disco. They'd all paid their £3 entry fee. Um, they were ordinary working class people from Kilmore, from Harmstown, from Coolock, from Artain. And um, it was about half one, went to the two. The light was actually winding down, it was nearly over, when somebody noticed a small fire in an alcove. In the time it took for a doorman to get a fire extinguisher and try and put out the fire, it was completely out of control. The DJ made an announcement asking people to leave in a calm and orderly fashion. And they were doing just that when suddenly the lights went out and everybody was plunged into darkness. Now you can imagine how terrified they must have been. They're in darkness in a burning building, breathing thick, toxic black smoke and 800 people are trying to get out. I mean, the panic must have been overwhelming. They all rushed to the fire doors and most, if not all, of the people inside should have been able to escape with their life. But the fire doors were all either blocked, malfunctioning, or locked. Or they gave the appearance of being locked because the owner of the nightclub used to lock the doors, or sometimes he would pretend that he had locked the doors with locks and chains to stop people sneaking their friends. So what happened then was the hundreds of people from these main doors here and it created a fatal kind of jam there wasn't enough room to get out of these narrow doors and it was carnage basically uh, the fire brigade came along the guards came along and these windows here, um, people were getting back into the windows to try and help their friends and out or try and see where their friends or their girlfriends still inside and it was just um, a horrific, horrific incident. Um, one man said later on, the survivor said that it was like standing inside an oven and another man who had tried to help a woman out of the window noticed that she couldn't get up because her shoes had melted into the floor. Um, by the end of the night, 46 people were dead. By maybe two or three weeks later, two more people had died. There were also over 200 people injured, many of them really badly, and yet most of the people who survived got no uh, first aid treatment. They didn't get any counseling afterwards for such a horrific event. And it's a real um, scar on the consciousness of this country. Immediately after the fire, the government launched an inquiry to try to find out 
the exact cause of the fire. Um, during the inquiry, it came to light that Mr. Eamon Butterley, the owner of the nightclub, had repeatedly broken health and safety regulations. Dublin Corporation had pointed this out numerous times and he'd done nothing about it. Uh, the judge also um, claimed that Mr. Butterley had tried to mislead the tribunal and that his evidence was not to be trusted. At the end of the tribunal, the judge decided that the most probable cause of the fire was arson. Now, this was a real kick in the teeth to the family of the victims and also the survivors because it sounded like the judge was saying that one of their own, one of the innocent people in the fire had started it and that's definitely not what happened. So they were very unhappy about that. In another uh, kick in the teeth for the families, uh, it meant that because it was an unknown arsonist, there was nobody for them to sue. And in a further kick in the teeth, because uh, the tribunal had decided that the fire had started due to arson, Mr. Butterly was able to sue uh, Dublin Corporation for um, damages, and he won over £560,000. That's in 1981. In today's money, that would be over €2 million. Euros. So the only person who benefited from the fire, if you like, was a person who certainly had a lot to do with the tragedy itself. Um, the families to this day have been fighting for justice to have another inquiry, to have um, new inquests for the victims, and also um, to have the kind of the insult to uh, the, the reputation of people from this area wiped out. And in 2009, it was struck from the record that the cause of the fire was arson. Um, so, where we're standing now is a little park less than a mile away from the site of the Stardust. In 1993, Dublin Corporation opened this park. It's a remembrance park to remember all the victims of the fire. As you can see behind me, there's a beautiful fountain with uh, two dancing figures to represent the couples that were there that night who died. And there are 48 jets of water. Uh, each jet of water represents a victim who perished in the fire. Also, all the pillars surrounding, there's 48 pillars too. So it is a beautiful um, little park and it's a nice place for people to go and reflect. The most important thing is that we as Dubliners and everybody else that we don't forget what happened. So many people don't know the story of the Stardust and in another 10 or 20 years time even less people will remember so it's important that strategies like this are remembered. There's new inquests this year to try and determine uh, the cause of death for the 48 people because the families of those are uh, victims they've always wanted justice they're not really interested in anything else they want to know why their loved ones died and maybe this year at last with the new inquests they'll get to find out